Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Welcome to Barbecue with Franklin. You know, ah, the pit, a pit. Well, some places have multiple pits. You know, the foundation of any barbecue joint is really its pits, its cookers. It could be a brick pit, it could be a steel offset, but either way, the cooker is always the heart and soul. A lot of people make barbecue cookers out of propane tanks. Once they don't hold pressure anymore, they pretty much just sit in a field or go to a landfill. So it's a great way to reuse something that's gonna go to waste. The metal is really thick so it retains heat. They're a great shape for barbecue cookers. This one has a hemispherical head that I think is great for airflow, and they're easy to size. They come in 250 gallon, 500 gallon, and 1,000 gallon. The dimensions on this 250 gallon tank are about 72 inches in length and about 30 inches-ish in diameter, but that can certainly vary by manufacturer. It's a great size for competition stuff because you could do two briskets, a couple racks of ribs, probably three racks of ribs most likely, and then you can put a little chicken shelf in there that you could have a couple of room for two pork butts. So that's a that's kind of the standard size for a competition cooker, which chance would have it is exactly what we're making this for. Just a quick warning. We're dealing with real propane tanks, and real propane is extremely flammable. Cutting open old propane tanks is risky business with real probability of explosions. Now, I am a semi-professional pit architect, sort of, and this still makes me really nervous. So if you're at all worried about it, seek professional help. We've got this 250 gallon tank right here. It's got old pressure valves and gauges and regulators and stuff. So we gotta try to unscrew these things so we can fill it up with water. I've got the valves off of this 250 gallon tank. <laughs> I always like to fill up the tanks with soapy water to push out all the air before I get started. You know, I don't really want to blow up. Don't want to waste anything. Hands off. Propane is treated with a stinky chemical Ethyl mercaptan. It's supposed to help you smell a gas leak, but the side effect is that flies love the smell of a freshly opened propane tank. When you walk into Smitty's, it's like a walking back into the 1920s. It's different, and it's dark. It's smoked over. This building was built in 1924. It was a small town meat market. We are still cooking the old fashioned way, just the way it's done since the turn of the century. It, it is a step back in time. Our pits are open flame. Well, it lets you know that you're right in the middle of the action, which a lot of times is intimidating. You come in what we call the back door, you walk in, and especially kids, you know, they'll walk around the corner and there it is, the fire, and that's what's cooking their barbecue and sausage that they're fixing to eat. 
We cook only with the post stove wood. Uh, there's a natural draw. All four lines of the pit area are drawn and, and the heat draws up the chimney. It's a natural draw. When I was little, I never saw a thermometer in the meat for cooking purposes, and we still don't have them. It's natural instinct by the ones back there cooking that they know when to, to turn them or what's going on inside that piece of meat. We do all that by human trial and error. We don't have machinery to do that for us. I think it takes more manpower to do it the way we're doing it. Uh, I know it takes more wood. It's had very few changes since 1924. And that's the way we, we are gonna try to keep it that way as long as we can. That is our goal, to make as few changes no modernization whatsoever if we can avoid it. Now that we've had this 250 gallon propane tank soaking for a while, the first step is to find a good center line. This is hugely important. The doors, the smokestack, the firebox are all based off of this one line. So at that point, go down one quarter of the circumference and that's the bottom of the doors and the grate level. Mark that straight line and then go up as big as I want the doors to be, probably about 18 to 20 inches. Mark that line and then I can find the horizontal center line between the two end caps. Ooh, you get the shing. Very nice. At that point, I can find the middle of the tank on a horizontal line, and that's where the thermometer is going to mount, and I can space out the doors. Now I'm going to figure out where this thermometer is going to go, and it's going to mount in the middle. We'll call it three and a quarter. So half of three and a quarter is one and five eighths. So center line, one. Five eighths there, one, five eighths that way. So that's the edge of where the thermometer is gonna be. So then I'm gonna end up putting one inch flat bar on here. I wanna give about a quarter inch outside of that. So I'm gonna measure about another quarter inch and that's where my one inch flat bar is gonna start. But the seam where I cut the door is gonna be right in the middle of that flat bar. So then I'm gonna go a half inch. So to me, I think that's where my door is gonna be cut. So as I'm measuring this stuff, there's no actual formula. This door can be as tall as you want it to be. It can be as wide as you want to be. However you want to build it, it's your cooker. And even for me, you know, I'm starting off with the center line and then going out from there. And that's just kind of how I'm thinking of it, where I want my doors to be. But do what you want, it's your cooker. Alrighty. So now that I got the doors marked, got the widths, got the center line where it's not gonna hit the thermometer, got the height, got the bottom, I'm ready to cut this thing. There is water in this tank. So that's why I've got the cord going along the backside. So it's not gonna be plugs not sitting in water and stuff. So here we go. So when I start cutting into here, water is gonna start dumping out. My feet are gonna get a little wet. If it gets too wet, just grab you a pallet, get you a cinder block, stand up on something that's, you know, non-conductive. So before we talk about the pits, let's talk about construction. 
This is what we're working on right now. It's about to be a new smokehouse, and all these cookers that are now in the trailers are gonna get craned out and placed up on the smokehouse. So let's go check out number one. This is kind of the OG. This is the one that I started with. It's named number one. It's made out of a 500 gallon propane tank. When I got this thing, it was in terrible condition. It didn't have a grease drain. The firebox had not been cleaned out. So the grease drain actually went back through the firebox and I had to get a rock hammer and chisel my way through. It was like Shawshank Redemption. I cooked on this thing day in, day out when the barbecue trailer opened. This was the only one, and in fact, I've slept many a late night, early mornings in here. I used to put a lawn chair right here and it would keep my cup of coffee warm right here and keep my feet warm by the firebox in the winter times. These days, we really just do sausage on it on the weekends. It's not fired up right now, which leads me to this new one that we'll be cooking ribs on. And then there's this one. So far, it's uh, named Bethesda. Rotisseries are kind of weird because most of them are gas assist or electric assist. This one is all wood. Eventually I'll figure out how to make a steam powered engine for it to power the rotisserie. But until then, it's just hamsters. But anyway, so this one cooks ribs and the other ones get brisket. This one's named Muchacho. This was the first thousand gallon tank that I built. The firebox is a 250 gallon cut in half with a 24 inch, half inch pipe liner. So it's got an air gap, it's, it's semi insulated. And this is, of course, is a thousand gallon tank. It's got a 10 inch smokestack on it. It's got a single grate that goes all the way across. This one for a long time has been our favorite until the newest one. That's our new favorite. And this is the new favorite. This one's named Nikki Six. It's kind of the baddest of them all, if you will. You know, because each cooker, you kind of make little modifications. Maybe you raise up the grates. Maybe you cut a little bit bigger opening down here at the firebox. Maybe you move the smokestack a little bit. Even a quarter of an inch makes a huge difference. And kind of the way I build these cookers is with a concentration on convection. Like, you don't want baffles or anything like regulating airflow. You just want air, like tons of natural draft coming through on these things. This has just become a really, really even good cooker. So these days, this one is my favorite, but let's go see what Rusty Shackelford's up to. Oh, it's Rusty Shackelford, my least favorite cooker. This was the second one that I built out of a thousand gallon tank. It's got the same firebox, but the only difference on this one is the hinges. I did a little bit differently, which in hindsight, I'm, I don't like, I'm gonna redo them and I put an eight inch smokestack on this one as opposed to a 10 inch. So it's got more back pressure, it gets great color, but it has a hard time finishing. Same single grade all the way across. So once we get our new smokehouse about wrapped up, we're gonna crane this thing over there. I'm gonna change the smokestack to be like the other ones, change the hinges a little bit, and we should be good to go. But in the meantime, I better go check some fires. So it's been a couple weeks. I've managed to start cutting the doors, let the water drain out. I know we're not gonna blow up, so into the shady space it goes. I think it's time to grab a grinder and get to work. Today I'm gonna finish cutting out the doors, but I'm gonna leave each corner still intact so the door does not lose its alignment. Before I finish cutting out the doors, I've got to get the hinges on. Now you could easily go and buy handles and hinges at the store, but I really like to make my own using horseshoes.
Finished up the hinges, made handles, cut out the four corners of the two doors. And they work. This thing is really starting to look like a barbecue pit. So if you don't feel like building your own cooker, we've got these options. So a general overview of these consumer cookers, this is kind of a water cooker. These kinds of cookers are super great for cooking chickens. You could do long cooks like brisket or something like that. Super lightweight, not crazy expensive, but it does have a water pan. Water pan. Sits right in there. I like to pour water in before I get my fire started. Coals are in there, you refresh it with wood chunks or, or whatever you want to use, and you control it with the air intake. So you've got three of these things all the way around. Be careful, because these things get hot. You've got the grate, you've got the lid, you've also got a factory thermometer on that lid. It's really high up. As we all know, you want to be taking your temperatures from grate level. So what I like to do is get an onion, put it right there, get a thermometer, you poke this guy through, you want the tip of the probe to be just about an inch above the grate. Get an accurate grate temperature. You've got not very good heat retention. All the heat's coming from the bottom. It's gonna come around and it's gonna swirl around a little bit. There's not a ton of airflow. Lots of moisture because of the water pan. So you need to be conscious to keep the vents open and try to keep as much airflow and not retain all that moisture in there. You've got pretty good capacity for its footprint. You can fit two pretty large pieces of meat on there. So this is a pretty good thing for a backyard kind of deal. And then there's this little guy, and this is a Kamado cooker. It's generally the same principle without the water pan. A Kamado style cooker is a traditional Japanese stove. So the way I really like to cook on these Kamado cookers is just using it as a grill. The reason why I like that is it takes such a small amount of charcoal to get this thing raging hot. It's crazy efficient. It's big enough to fit a whole piece of firewood in there. So you can just put a small handful of coals over here. One advantage that the Kamado has is that it's really, really thick ceramic material, so it retains a lot of heat. But the fact of the matter is, if you choke it down, it's just a glorified oven at that point. You can't refresh wood and keep flavor coming through. You could fit one or two really big pieces of meat on there. It's good for a really long cook. Not very good airflow, though. With this one, ah, uh, my old friend, the offset. This is certainly the style that I'm most familiar with. So it's got fire on one end, meat right in the middle, and then a smokestack. You've got lots of airflow. You can get moisture out. You can get wood in. You can keep on refreshing it. You can really control it a lot more. If it gets hot, you can just kind of open it up. If it gets too cold, you can build it up. You can maybe not fit as much meat as you could on these other two. But in my opinion, if you're looking for Central Texas kind of barbecue, my money's on this one. So each one of these cookers really does have their own pros and cons. So it's really up to you to figure out which direction you want to go in. I think it's time to work on the smokestack. So let's talk about a few fundamentals. Now, some people may want to put the smokestack on top or on bottom, but if you're trying to get the most airflow and the most heat across the grates, I think the best spot is right in the middle. What I'd like to do is find out where the grate is, make a level mark, cut the hole in the cook chamber for the smokestack, and make sort of a collector to come out. That way it pulls the heat and the air across the grates a little bit better. Cut one little curve. Got to finish up the smokestack. Well, there's certainly no shortage of opinions on smokestack size. For diameter, I like to go between six and 10 inches. I was leaving my smokestack way too tall to start so I can cut it down. It's a lot harder to add something to it. If it's too tall, the air that's going up is gonna cool off and then it's gonna to start to drop. If it's too short, then you won't actually get a good natural draft because you need different pressures to go on here to pull heat and convection across the grates. Well, now that we've got the smokestack on, it's time to work on the firebox. This is the firebox. It's a 250 gallon tank cut in half. 
I guess I need to find a Sharpie somewhere. And what I'm about to do is take a straight edge and mark a line all the way around and that's going to mark where the 24 inch pipe is going to go on the inside of this and that's going to leave us with a three inch air gap so it's semi insulated and then in the process I'll also mark the hole for the exchange between the firebox and the cook chamber. I'm going to measure straight down to the floor from this opening and this is going to determine how long the liner is going to be and that's the 24 inch pipe so 37 and a quarter 37 and a one quarter. I need to get the cooker a little bit higher to make room for the firebox. So this is definitely one of the trickier parts to this build, trying to get the firebox onto the cook chamber. If you'll notice, there are two spheres coming together. And I'm sure there's a really snazzy way to do this, but this is my way. And once I get it kind of set where it's gonna stay, I'll start to scribe a line up top, I'll cut it out. and eventually I'll work my way all the way around. Slide the thing in there, weld it, and it'll actually be on there. Hmm. Once we get the firebox on, we need to close it off and get started on the firebox door. So this is certainly a good foundation for a really, really great cooker. All the basic elements are here. From here on out, you could really do whatever your personal preference is. You could trim out the doors. You could decide what kind of grates you want to put in, what kind of thermometers you want to put on, if you want to damper on the smokestack, et cetera. You could really do anything you want. For me, I like it really, really simple, basic firebox, semi-insulated, one grate that goes all the way across and a huge smokestack. So I'm gonna keep grinding. Let's get to the grind. So right now, do you want me to actually talk, talk? Yeah, like sure. for real? Mm. Pretty much what I'm gonna do is start over. Like. And then I'm just gonna make the hinges. Speed? How did you learn to do that? Watch the YouTube video. Oh.